Hello, this is Christy and welcome to another tutorial for Zara Designer Pro. Today we will look quickly at a tool that I really love in Zara and it is found in this menu down here just above the lens and you may see another object in here, another tool depending on what you have used uh, last. So in Zara you can go to this tool that we will be looking at today. This is the blend tool. You can activate this tool by pressing the key W and here's what happens. By default, this tool doesn't do anything unless you have objects. So this tool allows you to morph one object into another. So that sounds like a really cool thing to do. So let's have a look. I want to take a star. So I'm just going to create a star here. Okay. And I want to use another object, uh, maybe a rectangle like this. So this is what the blend tool does. You can take the blend tool click on the first object, hold down your mouse cursor and drag and point to the second object. Here's what happened. If we change the fill, fill of these objects and change the outline, you can actually see that this tool transforms the first object into the second one and shows you these steps in between. Let me do another one more time. So I'm going to change the objects to not have a fill and to have a outline only. So again, they don't matter where they are positioned. You can just use the blend tool, click on the object and click on the destination object. And there you go. You have created a morph operation and this works. It doesn't have to be objects that have the same number of nodes or, or points. It just figures out and it adds and removes dots to turn your object into the other one. Why is this cool? You can change the steps here. So by default, it says five steps. Maybe I want to have only three steps. Press enter and there you go. It only creates three intermediate steps. You can do more, 15 steps and the transition is smoother. And what's really cool is this final object becomes an object of its own. And if you go to the blend tool, you can actually create another one starting from that one. So if I choose a circle here, I can go to the blend tool and start from this last object back to this one. And it continues to create morphing that one into the circle one. So this is uh, really cool because you can create some really nice transitions. Let's have a look. So I'm going to go and create several stars like this. I'm just going to go a red one and I'm going to do an orange one and a yellow one. And let's stop at the green one for now. So all these shapes not only change shape, but also watch what happens. Morse the color. So if I repeatedly go from one object to another, I can create a path of objects transforming into one another. All of the objects in my blend are now morphed from one to another. So if I add another one now, let's say I add another one that is blue here, I can continue my blend using the blend tool from the last one I started to the next one. So there you go. The color morphs again and the shape. In this case, they're all stars, so the shape doesn't yet change. But look what happens here because my final object still has the points showing and you notice the intermediary ones don't. But the previous one that I selected does and all the source objects have their points. So what you can do is if you're not happy with the morphing, you can actually click on one of the points and drag to connect the other point somewhere else on the target object. So this way you control the morph. So if I release now, you notice the morph goes through that point onto the other side. So it actually changes the way the morphing is happening. If I connect the uh, other points, it may rotate depending on how many points I have and what happens to them. The morph could be different. You still end up with the same object at the end, but the steps in between are different and you can change, of course, the steps for all of these morphs together. Another way you can actually create a new object here. Let's say 
this color and then if you decide to start from one of the intermediary objects you click on it and go there so now that creates a more from there to here so all this blending tool is really cool you can create like nice funny frames for diplomas and children and greeting cards or graphics or coloring stuff let me show you another thing when you have the two objects blending so let's have this object and then let's have a circle for for example and they are both the same color uh, let's actually make them uh, white and black right so now when i blend these two from the start to the end of course the shape changes and the color changes to black but maybe I don't want this to be so monotonous. And then if I go up here to the color blend effect, instead of fading, which actually turns your original color into the destination color, you can choose rainbow. And then if, if your colors are different, this is black and white, so obviously it's not gonna help me much. But if I change the color of the original object like that, and this other color here, maybe choose another color, you notice that the blending doesn't uh, happen. It cycles like alt rainbow. It cycles through the colors of the rainbow and reaches the other color. I don't think it happens so obvious on the general rainbow. And depending on the starting colors that you have and the ending colors, you may get different results here. But look, this green, this yellow turns into green, turns into blue. In, and depending on the colors that I have, it creates this rainbow effect in between. And as with the other tools that I showed you until now, you have these arrows here that create some sort of profile. Now, if you click on this profile, let me just add more steps here just to show you an example. So I have this blend here. And if I choose the profile, position profile, it opens this very familiar window that you see on the fill tool, the transparency tool, the shadow tool. And look what this allows you to do. It allows you to shift the starting and ending curve and fallout point to the start or beginning of the blend. And the second one, the distance between the values. So if I go all the way down here, there's only the ends the most objects are on this the ends if i move the other way most of the intermediate objects are focused sort of concentrated in the middle and then you can move that up left and right to 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 merge so it's a very funny animation here but that's not about the animation it's about controlling what happens to these uh the distance and the placement of the steps in between and there is another one here attribute profile which controls the color blending and the attributes so you can get more of the ending color or you can get less and more of the starting color and you can get the color spread so if you want a very stark contrast you can go all the way here and you get most of them yellow and then the rest are just at the end or you get most of them green and just the values at the end that are the original and the ending color. So you can play with this a lot and you can find the best option you like. So this is a really cool tool. I mean, I used to play with this a lot just for no reason, just creating all these funny, um, funny blends. So look at this, how cool it is to just put these in the corners. I know I'm only using stars, but you can be using anything. And I think it works with any complex, any uh, objects, no matter how complex they are. So you just create different colors here. They don't even have to be in rainbow uh, sequence or anything like that. You just blend them all in. Let's do something else like a orange or something. And then you just take the blend tool and just connect these objects together and you make some nice interesting frames cool the only thing it doesn't work with the last object connecting it to the first one because it doesn't generate a circular blend so you may want to have another object here and just do the final step with that one like so so there you have it this is the blend tool you can then 
reshape this object and do whatever you like with it change the color completely you can change all the individual colors so if I have this pink here and I want to replace it with something else the the whole fade and the whole transition changes to accommodate that color so okay thanks for watching thank you for your time I hope you find these tutorials interesting I'm just walking through all of the functions in Zara Designer Pro some of these you may know some of them maybe you've seen them for the first time Regardless of that, if you like my tutorials, feel free to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. See you next time.